Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Wellness. I'm Erin Hart, and I have with me Deb Babcock, who is such an inspiration in um, in the sugar and flour free lifestyle world. Hi, Kim. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, so we're just going to have a conversation with Deb today, and we're grateful for her being here. Um, this is so, um, so this is Wednesday Wellness, and I started doing these interviews uh, last year. Uh, just as I think it's so important for us to find ways to learn from each other. Um, so I'm a registered nurse health coach, and I help women who are wanting to lose weight for the last time with a sugar and flour free lifestyle. So one of the things that I have found to be so key in achieving success in this lifestyle is learning, learning from people who are successful, right. Or who have uh, made this into a lifestyle and learning what works for them and learning how, you know, and also understanding their struggles and their challenges. And we can learn from our mistakes as well. Like, so I, um, I'm grateful for Deb being here. Uh, we'll just have a casual conversation with Deb and just hear about her story and, her experience in implementing a sugar and flour free lifestyle into her life. And then um, at the end of the call, if anyone has questions that they want answered by Deb, if you have a challenge in your program and would like her input, um, this is a great place to do that. So um, welcome, Deb. I'm just going to spotlight us. Hi. <laughs> so, one second here. We'll just add the spotlight. So, yay, Deb, where are you in the world? You're back east, aren't you? In the I'm in Florida, uh, Melbourne, Florida, the central space coast of Florida, where all the rockets go off. And I'm not too far from there. So, oh, that is so fun. My daughter would love to go there. She just is going to be the first girl on the moon. So, oh. <laughs> well, the, we're not too far from, you know, Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy, Kennedy Space Center. So you'll just have to make a trip and stay with me. <laughs> I know. We'll have to come visit you someday. <laughs> but I'm so glad that I can talk with you today. I've just known you from social media and just been really inspired by you and your story. Um, and you are such a giving and amazing person like you just are always constantly on social media helping and encouraging people so I just thought it'd be fun to interview you and learn from you um on you know how you've made this um how you've achieved success in this lifestyle um for yourself and so anyway tell us a little bit about yourself I'd love to just hear a little bit about your story well, I'm um, I'm 65. I'm retired. I'm a mom of one and a grandma of one. I've been married 43 years, um, and I'm a retired physician assistant. So, um, this uh, no flour, no sugar lifestyle really spoke to me because of the the science uh, behind it. And uh, I had been struggling in dieting probably for a good 30 years of my life. I mean, I, I did probably 20 or 30 different diets. I, I can't even name them. So, I mean, I can name them. I have named them all, <laughs> but some of them I even did two or three times. And it's like, why are you going back to something that doesn't work? I mean, I was able to achieve, you know, a weight loss goal, but um, I quickly gained it all back. So I haven't really sustained uh, a weight loss until really now. I mean, I did, you name it, Weight Watchers, Octavia, you know, I even did a very low calorie hospital-based uh, program where it was only 700 calories a day. That was really, really drastic. Uh, in prescription diet pills, uh, I've been on those, um, but none of them were ever sustainable. So finally, when this came about, I heard about it in 2019 and I read the book and I was instantly hooked because it's like, yes, it, it's not, I mean, I, I wasn't sure of what actually to eat 
and how to eat it. Like, cause you heard, oh no, you need to eat six times a day or you need to eat this. And so three times a day, I, I got that. The science behind it um, is what really sold me. And then no flour, no sugar. It, you know, at first I thought, wow, I, okay. But I had been on restrictive diets before. Um, Whole 30, you can't, you know, can't have soy, you can't have dairy. There's lots of things you can't have on that. And some of the other um, uh, diets that I was on before, uh, I mean, you couldn't even eat food. You only had to eat their stuff. (laughs) You only had one meal a day of real food. So this like, wow, I could eat all this food, you know, no flour, no sugar was like nothing really. It's like, I didn't find that restrictive. Um, But to have to do this for the rest of my life, that was kind of a little like, oh, this is not a diet. And that's where it kind of turned the corner for me when, when I knew, but um, that I, that this is, I have to do something sustainable because nothing that I did before was sustainable. So it had to become a part of me and, and it did, but the, the beauty of it is how it works. And, um, and I knew it was a brain problem. I mean, I knew there's something up here and there's something in, in your heart too, which, which we'll, we'll talk about, but um, the beauty of this program is just for those that don't know, is that it lowers the, um, the baseline insulin levels. And therefore, when you do that, it increases your leptin, which is a, our satiety hormone. And then it also decreases that dopamine stimulation and dopamine is our reward center where we want, we crave and we urge and we have impulsivity, like, well, we'll just like reach for the food without even thinking. I mean, this kind of puts all the brakes on that with that dopamine, instead of going crazy all the time, it reigns that in. And it just, it's just, it's marvelous how the human body is designed by God. (laughs) And to think of all which we were doing the wrong way, it's like, I truly think that this is the way probably God designed us how he wants us to, to eat. I mean, think of it back in the olden days in the Garden of Eden. I mean, yeah, Eve even had restrictions. She couldn't eat the apple, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, we can eat apples and we can eat fruit. And that's what's so great about this is everything that I was on before, um, I it was so restrictive, but I can eat all the food groups. It's just, it's just a wonderful thing. Yes. I'm so I, happy. I agree. I love it. And for those of you who are listening to this recording after and who who aren't familiar with the book that Deb is talking about, it's Brightline Eating by Susan Pierce Thompson. And um, I'm not endorsed by or affiliated by Brightline Eating at all, but I um, and Deb, like we follow Brightline Eating and it has been life-changing for us for sure. And, um, and I relate so much to your story, Deb, because I'm a nurse and And the science just absolutely is what um, changed everything for me. Once I understood um, the science of of leptin resistance and the dopamine and, you know, um, it just helped me. It just something switched in me. It's like, oh, it just makes so much sense. And um, you don't have to starve yourself to lose weight. You can eat an abundance of whole real food the way that God made it and, um, And I love that, like what you said, that it is, you know, we just eat the food the way that God made it. It's not man-made or processed or it's just healthy, real food. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it is so neat to find a solution that's, that's sustainable for once. I think so many of us relate to being on that dieting roller coaster and it's exhausting and it's discouraging and overwhelming to try to navigate this world of all the different um, dieting plans out there. But it is, um, I love this sugar and flour free lifestyle. It's just so healthy and you eat every food group. And <clears throat> so tell us a little bit about what your life look, looked like before um, you, that you started and then kind of the difference of how your life has changed. Um, um, I'd love to hear your, your take on that. 
Yeah, before uh, food was um, food was my drug. It was my drug of choice. It, it was my comfort uh, when any anything was going um, sad or bad or celebratory or anything. It, food was always a part of my life. It was um, always even in my family. I mean, I, my my grandma was uh, she was Polish and. Um, I came from French uh, Canadian. Um, my dad was French Canadian, and just like all the the food and in just every but everything revolved ar- around food, and food was love. And my parents were uh, de- from the Depression, so you would never ever waste any food, or it was always the clean plate club. So food was just such a big part of me, and um, I grew up in a house of, I, you know self-made chefs. I mean, we were always in the kitchen cooking and um, everything revolved around food. But where I got into trouble was my relationship with food. I mean, yes, I love food, but I used it too much um, as a, you know, to, to comfort. And I've had some very sad moments in my life. I had a period of five or six years where, where, um, you know, I had, I had several dogs die. My, my mom died, my brother died, my other brother died, and, and my father finally died all within a period of five years. I have one brother left of my, the family of four that I grew up with, but it was just a snowball. And I used, um, I used that food is, is a drug and that my highest weight ever uh, was I, I topped out at um, 238 pounds. Um, I'm five nine, and um, the pain that I had from all that, the joint pain. I mean, I ruined my knee. Um, uh, you know, your our bodies also weren't designed to to have that weight. Uh, your knee feels four times its body weight. So I was walking around with like 950 pounds of pressure on my knee and that gave out. So I needed a knee replacement. So what kind of got me stirred was I need to lose 50 pounds in order to prepare for this surgery. So that was my initial why, like, why are you doing this? Like I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I knew I, I just, I needed to get, get fit for this um, surgery. So I, I lo- lost about 20 pounds before on an, on another plan. And I knew I wasn't going to get to the 50 on this plan. And then I heard about bright lane eating. And I said, okay, this is going to take me there. So I lost the, the other 30 um, in time. And I had, I had um, my knee replacement surgery in July of, of 2020. And um, I was, doing really well, uh, after physical therapy was very difficult, but I, I was able to go on some awesome hikes and stuff. I still had a little bit more ways to go, but, um, nine months into the, into this lifestyle, I tanked and I went into the ditch. And so I, you know, I haven't been perfect. Uh, my weight loss has been not very fast, but I went into the ditch and I think it was the post event collapse syndrome. Um, and that's a real thing. And I know you talk about this, Aaron. and it's, you know, when something big happens, a big life event, like a wedding, or it could be something happy or whatever, but I had surgery that was big. And then I had physical therapy for like two months. And that was like intense. And then I went on this awesome hike that I thought, Oh, finally I could do it. And then it's like, Oh, okay. And it just like all caught up with me. And I just, I couldn't, it's like, I'm done. I I can't do this anymore. And I uh, was in the ditch for about three months and I gained like 30, 30 pounds of what I, of that 50 that I lost. So in, in, so in January of 2021, I kind of got back in to the program and have never looked back in the what I found out in the ditch is what I didn't do is I didn't do the inner work. And that's what got me into trouble. I don't want to say I was a little too cocky, but I mean, you think it was like, my gosh, I, it's, it's a plan. It's a food plan. I'm doing it fine. But I never really realized about post event collapse syndrome, or if that was even a thing or how that can affect you and just sneak up on you and boom, it could be 
it's gone. And, and I was in the ditch. So the ditch, I'm grateful for that. I mean, we got to be grateful for our scars. And I'm grateful that it happened because had that not happened, it wouldn't have launched me um, into my second why, my very deep, deep why, which was the pain that I had uh, when I went back into the sugar and flour. It was so intense. And who knew that sugar would light your joints on fire? I mean, who knew? And it really scared me because I was in such pain that I had a couple of narcotic pills left over from that post-surgical pain uh, that they give you. And I had to take a narcotic to get through the night. And that scared the, <laughs> scared the crap out of me. It's like, who does that? And me as a PA, it's like, well, this is how addiction starts. I mean, I was scared of those pills. I needed it. I treated them with reverence and I needed it when I need, needed them for my surgery. But to take it because my, my joints were hurting because I ate too much sugar or I thought something else was wrong with me. No, it was the sugar. So I needed to do the inner work. So I, I did that. And then I've never looked back. And it took me probably another year. Uh, so that brings me to February of 2022, when I finally lost all my weight. And um, I'm 78 pounds down. Um, so I had lost you know, uh, about 50 or so, 58 with bright line eating, no flour, no sugar. And then the other 20 was from that other program, but I'm 78 pounds lighter and I've kept it off for a whole year. Wow. So <laughs> yeah. amazing. It's seriously such a miracle. And, it is. It and is. your story is so inspiring because I, and I love that you're just so willing to be vulnerable and share your struggles as well. Because I think that that's most of our experience, right? Is that no one has a straight line to success. And so, you know, for the, if, you know, we have, I think we all have the tendency to want to be perfect and, and have this, um, you know, but it just doesn't work out that way. Sometimes like we're human, we make mistakes, but like you said, I feel like our mistakes are just such a great way to learn and strengthen our program going forward that we're stronger um, yeah, I never learning those lessons the hard way. <laughs> yeah, in in my line of work, uh, if you make a mistake, you can in your yours too. You could kill somebody. Yeah, we have to be perfect. Medic, I mean, medical professionals are terrible <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> doing things for themselves because we are so worried about making a mistake. My God, you can kill somebody. Well, I was killing myself. Mm. slowly. So, um, when I finally stepped back and said, okay, come on, uh, you, you can do it. So I pulled myself up and yeah, it was not, I was unstoppable. It wasn't, and it took forever. I mean, this thing, this took me years to do how you lost all your weight in, in a year. I'm just in awe of you, Aaron, how you oh. were able to lose your weight, but it, and we, but we can't compare ourselves to other people. It took me years to, to lose my weight. So that's, and, a, that's, a big... but you know, I know a lot of people that are in so inspired by you because of that, because so many people, um, you know, lose weight more slowly and it is a long game. And, you know, so it takes an abundance of patience and we all have a different journey. Like you said, we can't compare to anyone just we can only compare the who the only person we should compare ourselves to is who we were six months ago, right? But um, but I know that so many people are inspired by your story because you had the bumps in the road and you just kept going and you didn't quit and you know you were patient and consistent and that's what success looks like is you know we underestimate what we can do in a year or sorry, a lot of times we overestimate what we can do in a year, but we underestimate what we can do in like five or 10 years. Like our lives can look completely different. And so, um, I appreciate you sharing your struggle and being in the, in the ditch because it is, um, there are important lessons to be learned and, and, um, and it's, you know, not always a straight line to success. I know I've had a lot of, um, bumps in the road too, and struggles with binging, um, 
you know, occasionally and, and quantities has been my struggle and, you know, overcoming emotional eating. And I still sometimes struggle with that. And so I would love to just hear like, what are your tips for someone who is in the ditch or who, um, or who is struggling with a particular part of their program? Like, how did you, um, overcome those three months? Like, how did you get back on track? Yeah, that I knew that that was, um, when I was in the ditch, I, I knew what I was doing and I, I hated how I was feeling. So I think it was the pain that, that drove me. Um, and I, and I knew I would, didn't do the inner work and I, and I tried to do it by myself. Uh, I didn't reach out and ask for help and I never asked, um, for divine intervention. I just never asked God for help. I, for somehow, you know, I'm a Christian and I just never, never would have thought to ask for a prayer. So, so I did find a Christian based uh, program um, of a surrender program that I went through that really helped. And that's what I think people need to realize that Um, It's not about the food plan and you've got to either find books or resources or, uh, or a coach like, like you, Aaron, to reach out to and help. It's not just about doing the food plan. So if you can't find, you know, string together a couple days, then I think you need some help and you got to put the investment out and yes, it's going to cost money, but you have to do that. Otherwise you're going to get stuck in just that little bit of two or three months of, of, of that program that I took. Um, it really helped me. And it was, I forgot to ask God for help. So that was my missing link. So once I had that and I worked out on a lot of my inner stuff, I mean, I had a lot of self-loathing and, and that I had to learn to love myself again. I mean, yeah, I even struggle with it today. So I'm working on that. <laughs> and that has what kind of helped me uh, is, is I lack the confidence and I lack the self-love. So that helped. Um, I had, you know, I had a very slow, slow progress. I mean, maybe 0.8 of a weight loss or looking at it globally, it was only like a half a pound a week. I mean, very, very slow, but I, I kept, I kept at it. And um, I tweaked my plan a little bit too. Um, I, I when I first started, there's this enormous amount of vegetables that you have to eat, and I right at the get go, it's like I can't do this. I I just can't. And um, so instead of eating six and fourteen like they recommend, I went ten and ten. And even after a while, it was just twenty ounces was was just too much. To, for me. So now I've backed down to maybe seven ounces of vegetables at lunch and dinner, and that's just perfect for me. So I, I tweaked the plan a little bit. I lowered my fruit a little bit. I increased my protein in a little bit, and it seemed to all come together. Um, I changed my mind too that this is not a diet. This is this is forever. And you know, when you think about people who are like um either celiac or they have a peanut allergy or, or even people of the Jewish faith, they can't eat pork. I mean, so we don't eat sugar and flour. What's different about how we say we don't eat sugar and flour versus them saying, oh, well, I don't eat gluten. Oh, I don't eat pork. Well, do people look at them and say, mm-hmm. no, <laughs> they yeah. don't. They, they have drawn that line in the sand. They have made that boundary and they don't cross it because what happens? What happens when someone who is celiac eats gluten? Well, they are having a hard time in the toilet and they don't want to go there. What happens when someone eats a peanut with a peanut allergy? Well, they're going to the ER. <laughs> they could die. <laughs> I mean, it's not as drastic as that is for us when we eat sugar flour, but I know what it does to me. And it's it's, it causes me to want to eat more and more and more. Um, it, the dopamine thing goes off. The monster gets awakened in uh, the pain. I just had such severe joint pain. So 
um, it, it's just the way you think about it in your identity. I like to say I'm a no flogatarian, um, <laughs> just like a vegetarian. They, they don't eat meat. Well, I don't eat flour and sugar. And I am not um, ashamed or afraid to say that to people or when I'm out. It's like, no, I, I just, it's who I am. I, I don't do that. And I don't take offense to it because no one's pointing the finger at those other people. You know, no one's doing that. Oh, you have gluten allergy. Oh, isn't that? Oh, uh, no. Yes. <laughs> so I, I love I'm, that. I love how that I you have made it part of your identity. And yeah. I think that that is so key, like in long-term behavioral change is it's not like, like you said, we have to, it can't just be the physical weight loss. Like I think that that's why a lot of people regain their weight after they end up losing all the weight is because they, like you said, haven't done that inner work. And, um, and I'm sure you can relate, but like for me in my experience, like my weight loss was so dramatic, but, um, physically, but just as dramatic was the mental and emotional and spiritual transformation that happened as well. And, you know, it's, it's, our bodies are just so connected with our spirits and our minds and our hearts. And, and we have to do that inner work and not only change our habits around our food and our body, but also, you know, and uh, become uh, changing our habits with, um, just so that we can progress spiritually and mentally fo- focusing on our mental and emotional health as well. So uh, I love what you said about um, making it part of your identity. It's just so key. And, and what you said about making God part of your program, you know, that was a key that I was missing for so many years. You know, I never thought to pray and ask God for help and strength. But once I started doing that, like consistently every night and just asking and pleading like for help in achieving this goal in my life, I, you know, received that strength from God. And it, so that was such an eye-opening thing. And, and I love that that was part of your experience too. So, yeah, it was the surrender. It's just surrender. Doesn't mean giving up or waving a flag and saying, I I quit. It means no, here I am. Come fill me and help me and guide me. I lay it at the feet of Christ. And that, I mean, that's you, we just forget that we can tap into that strength. Um, so as, as Christians, we can, we can do that. And, and God gives us the power and the authority to do that. And we, in, you know, the devil is always that little voice in our, in our head, you know, saying, Oh, you need that. Or, or you're ugly, or you still have a fat butt, or you whatever. And it's like, get out of there. You just slap them off the, your <laughs> right, <laughs> and you, right. And you have the power. We have the power. I mean, the Bible says we have the power to stamp out scorpions. And, and uh, we just forget to tap into that. So um, yeah, it's, it's a daily thing, a daily surrender. Mm, I love that. I love that word because uh, it, you know, a lot of times I think we resist wanting to surrender to this as a lifestyle, but we have to ditch the diet mentality and really yes. embrace the identity and, and trust in God and trust in the program and just, you know, consistently execute it. And we can see just an extra, such an extraordinary transformation. So I would love to ask you, um, you know, Um, have you, so you did transition to maintenance and so how is your life different now? Um, you know, you talked about being in so much pain and when you started and tell us a little bit about what life is like for you in maintenance. It's, It's like, it's surreal. It's, it's like the most wonderful thing in the world. (laughs) I mean, I've been in maintenance for a year now and I, Every piece of clothing that I have in my closet fits me. Um, it's like going shopping every morning. You know, it's like, what am I going to wear today? And I have all these like cute things that I could wear. And I have not gone above my goal range 
And, and that's a thing that I always like to say is don't have one goal number, yeah. have a range of five pounds because I mean, you eat, eat something with soy sauce and you're going to gain two pounds in the next day. I mean, did you gain weight? No, it's the soy sauce. So, you know, you need to have that. It's, this is a range of five pounds and I have not gone above that range in a whole year. And I've been living this way. And, you know, I look at the things that I eat and this is like a, what a normal person would would eat. I mean, this is no different from anybody. I mean, I had I had some some potatoes with my dinner uh, the other day, and I had green beans, and and I mean, everything is like almost like what I used to eat. Um, there's such freedom too. I don't like just going shopping uh, at like ten thirty in the morning and driving around and seeing whatever fast food normally if I was shopping oh I'm gonna have to stop for something or I need to go through that drive through the, so the freedom that you have is it's just it's so wonderful you're just like well I don't I don't need to stop I don't even it's not time to eat and, or driving long distances you know we go up to the mountains a lot in uh, North Carolina and it's a 10-hour drive and normally You'd see all the billboards and, oh, we got to stop through there and get that. No, once you eat, you're done. It's the freedom that you have. Um, Yeah, it's it's my life is just I don't know. I just I'm walking like on a cloud. I am cloud nine. I feel so much better. All of my joint pain is gone. Um, I have I have written down. (laughs) I think people will know that that I have written down. uh, a hundred and five non-scale victories. I and mean, not growing all the time. I love your number just keeps growing. <laughs> yeah, I think I had 88. Look at all these. Look at this. Pages and pages and pages of non-scale victories that that I never in a million years would even think that they were a thing. Um, yeah. Oh, I love that. What are some of the surprising non, or what are some of your favorite non-scale victories? I'm curious. Um, well, I don't have any, what was really surprising is, um, I don't have any bleeding gums anymore. I used to hate going to the dentist and I'd get the lecture and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, my gums, my gums don't bleed anymore. And yeah, I take care of my teeth and I do, you know, that's my ritual. You know, I always brush my teeth, especially after dinner. I always, I always go use my water pick. I, I always, I always say that water pick has saved me. And, and if there's a fire in the house that I'm grabbing that water pick <laughs> you know, as I run out, <laughs> forget putting on a robe or anything. I'm going to grab that water pick, but um uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that may be part of it, but um, no more bleeding gums. And I don't have to wear Spanx or those undergarments that kind of suck you in. I don't have to do that anymore. And of course, my joint pain is, is great. I don't, I don't feel that. Uh, my skin is better. I feel I'm, I used to have um, real terrible um, rosacea and pimples and things. I don't have that anymore. Um but I think the 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 probably the best non-scale victory is I'm more confident and I challenge myself and I do things now that I never thought I could do before, like hiking, um, um, my art. I'm I'm taking art classes and I'm doing these fabulous paintings that I never thought that I'd be able to achieve. When before I would say, Oh, I can't, I can't do that. Um, and I'm, I went back to start to take yoga. I hadn't taken a yoga class in like eight years. So I'm back doing that. But I feel like I can handle anything that comes my way. And and I know that I'm not going to turn to food for comfort too. That's a big, a, a big non-scale victory because I've had some stress. I mean, we all have we all have in our life. We all have a thing. We all have a family member that's a little off. <laughs> we all have, I mean, no one has a perfect family member. No one has a, 
perfect family, even though it may seem like that, but there seems like there's always issues and somebody's got something, but what do you do about it? And I don't turn to food anymore. It's just, I don't go there. Um, Just like finding healthier ways to deal with the stresses and emotions of life. I feel like for me, that's like the biggest, that, that has been the biggest, um, victory is like learning how to, um, not use food yes. in an unhealthy way, you know, like a drug, like you talked about before, like to avoid emotions and, but, you know, still, honestly, for me, sometimes I struggle with that, like just, um, the emotional eating and, uh, but it, you know, looking back from where I started, I just have come so far, but I would love, so how, um, when was it that you really started to experience that like freedom from, from the, that emotional eating and, and not using food like to, as a drug anymore? Wow. Um, I, maybe, maybe a year into it, maybe I'd say, uh, it took a while. Um, I mean, I didn't, it, I, the food itself, I wasn't drawn to it. Like I would be able to, we had some contractors over the house and I would make them all sorts of stuff and desserts. And, um, I, I never even phased me and, and I make it for uh, my husband and, um, it didn't, it wasn't drawn to me. Um, I didn't feel a draw to it, but, um, to really, feel settled. I mean, it takes a while. I think it's different for everybody. Yeah. You know, like, um, when you have like, do you ever have strong urges and cravings to eat off of your plan still, or do they, has it faded where it, it doesn't it like it, it's more manageable, but did they ever come? And how do you deal with that? Like when they do come those thoughts to eat off your plan or those urges? Right. Um, no, I, I don't think I've had, I've never had like, well, when I was in the ditch, I, I was, I was pretty bad eating, eating stuff all the time, but I haven't had, um, I've had on occasion where I took a bite of this or that, um, because I want, I wanted to, you know, I, it was a choice that I made, um, but I got right back up the very next meal. Like when we were on a cruise, yeah, I had a glass of wine or two, or yeah, I had a bite of that, but I didn't have like the whole thing. And it, it really, it just like the fireworks and the spark just didn't go off anymore. <laughs> you know, it just didn't. I mean, that movie, that Disney movie, Ratatouille, that, that little rat, you know, how all the fireworks went off of his head and his brother, when his brother ate stuff, it was like, he was like probably a one or a two on the susceptibility <laughs> scale, but poor Ratatouille had, was like a 10 plus <laughs> and my, the fireworks just, you know, really it's like, eh, okay, it's all right. Yeah. I've tasted that before. So I will tell myself that like, yep, I've had that before. Uh, I know how it tastes. Um, I don't really, I don't really want it. I don't need it. It's not time to eat. Um, I'll talk to myself. I'll do, you know, we all need to have an emergency action plan too. And that's where, what if you get into a situation, what are you going to do? So I, I usually take, you know, 10 deep breaths. Um, I've actually prayed. Um, literally this happened. We were, we were driving down the road and there is this place that's been there for 58 years and it serves the wonderful thing that we would always the car would just be a magnetic pull to go in there and I we every time we drove by I would go there and I just said okay I know I'm going to drive by and I just said to Jesus please take this craving away from me just please take this craving away from me and I said it over and over and before I knew it I was driving right by. I mean, my husband was driving, so I didn't close my eyes when I was praying in the car. (laughs) But if you are driving, you, yeah, you have to come up with a plan and it's, you can also come up with um, a scenario. There's a game that you can play with yourself of, 
of write down five or six different scenarios and what would you do if that happens? So like, okay, I know there's going to be an upcoming bridal shower. Uh, what am I going to do when they bring out the cake? So you already play it in your mind. That that's how it's going to happen. So you don't get caught off guard because you know, things like that are going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, help going. I, we did go to a, a big uh, 4th of July party last year. And of course, a big spread of food. And I asked the hostess, I said, uh, let me, let me do some cleanup. Um, I got myself busy. And when you're busy, then you're not eating. So mm-hmm. oh, I be, of, be of service. And yeah, I was, she, she was like, fine. And, and she, I knew she was struggling. I mean, she was doing like everything. No one was helping her. So I started clearing up dishes. I was filling people's drinks. I was taking stuff out of the oven. I was just like the hired help (laughs) without being. Yeah, Deb, such good tips um, because, you know, I think that the weight loss like that is so exciting and amazing, but I think really just the goal is also just peace with our food and freedom from cravings. And I love to hear like your experience with just, um, living with so much peace with your food and your body and freedom from cravings. That is so beautiful. And I love seeing all of your adventures and your painting and, and um, this is, this is my latest painting. I'm working on it. It's a uh, tile. roof. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. I'm taking an art class. Yeah. Um, like it's so fun when our, when our, brains are so I'm going to be finishing from, that on on Friday yeah when our brains are like freed up from the food thoughts and food obsession we just have so much more space to you know for that um self-actualization and and it's that's that's what life is all about we don't want to be obsessed with food and thinking about that all the time we want to go and live our lives like I really think that we all have our lives have purpose and meaning and that, um, that, you know, we're put on earth for a reason. So like, um, like having a deep reason why, like is so important to just help you to do what you really are meant to do in this life. And so I love seeing all of your adventures and it's just so inspiring. So if you had any advice for someone who's just starting a sugar and flour free lifestyle, like what tips would you give them for success? Um, you know, surrender to surrender to God, if you're a Christian, of course, um, but surrender to the plan and just, just follow the plan and commit to it. Um, the bottom line also is you have to know, you know, your why. And if you, and I've heard people say, it's got to be a why to make you, that makes you cry. Uh, what is your, and you talk about this too, your deep why in, you know, the, the seven, uh, seven layers exercise that you do by uh, Dean Graciosi. Um, that's why you're so great, Erin. You know more of this stuff than me. <laughs> and another tip would be to seek help and like professional help like Aaron I mean Aaron's got like her PhD in coaching I mean no (laughs) well you have done such extensive work though and that's that's if you're struggling and can't get it together then seek out people and that's what Aaron's for she's there for you and I mean, you still do free, um, sessions once in a while still. Yeah. Yeah. Free coaching calls. So like if someone in, yeah, thanks for saying that Deb, because it's like, that's why I became a coach was because I just knew for me, like how important connection was, um, and connection with people who have done what you're trying to do and who have been successful at it, but also connection with a group of people who are going through it together and, And, um, it's so key. Um, I, I love that. And, um, and it's just, we, we don't have to do this alone. I feel like if we can have support and guidance and accountability, it makes it so much easier and faster and way more fun. But, um, 
you know, I, what, uh, I love the tips that you gave and, um, that's why I love doing these interviews and learning from people like you is because you've been successful at it and learning what works, like what, what helped you. And it, I think it's so valuable and I appreciate yeah, it. I had to, I had to, I had to find, um, I had to find my, uh, another why. Cause you know, when I had my first why it was Or why and that's when it really hit me and that's that's when I started to dive deeper and know that that you know the deep pain that I had the family history of diabetes um colon cancer you know these things that really got me to my core and that why has to become a foundation for you and and you know, if I could say one thing to people is, is you've got it within you. You have the strength, you have the power, you have the authority, you are worthy, you are loved. You are so worth this journey and, you know, you can do it. And it's, it, so what if it takes a couple years like me? So what? All I could tell you is on, when you finally land the plane or you're on this side of it, it's just, it's just bliss and, and stop the self-loathing and bashing and, you know, don't focus so much on the number, you know, focus on your non-scale victories to keep, start a list like me, you know, make your, make your list and focus on that. I mean, there were times where I was stalled for months and months and months. And I, the scale, I thought the scale was broken. Maybe it needs a new battery. Why is it moving? <laughs> and, and it was, it was just, it just, I was on a plateau. So these things happen and you have to just keep going because what's the alternative? You've already done that stuff. You know, that doesn't work. So, you know, why would you do something that didn't work? At least this will get you there. And if you're a turtle, well, hey, turtles unite is what I say. The turtle, the turtle is my spirit animal. Just like, just like pearls are my spirit jewelry, because pearls are made from grit. And if you don't have grit, you don't have a pearl. So that is, that's a, that's my, my spirit jewelry are pearls because, you know, when you get just down and dirty and You've been through rock bottom and slowly, 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 you will rise above and become a pearl. And, and rubies too are also, my husband got me this ruby and diamond little ring that I had for our seventh anniversary. And I, and I couldn't wear this because it was so tiny. And finally I get to wear this. And this reminds me too, is that I am more precious than rubies. Mm-hmm. And nothing that you desire can compare to her. So we are just God's precious jewels and, um, and always, always remember that. So mm-hmm. those are my spirit, my spirit jewels and, and my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I it. need to make a painting of a turtle yes. with pearls and rubies. <laughs> I know. I love that, Deb. Because that is so fun (laughs) because it does, it requires such an abundance of patience and consistency, you know, and grit. And, um, that is such a perfect example and visual because that is what success looks like. We got to just keep going, even when we don't feel like it. And you just keep taking uncomfortable action every day and over time, you know, it doesn't matter how long it takes. It will take however long it will, but you just keep moving and you keep going and you don't give up. So thank you so much for sharing. Yes. Thanks so, for having um, me. I just wanted, if anyone has questions for Deb, feel free to raise your hand or, or put it in the chat. Um, we'll just open it up. If anyone wants to share like their takeaway from what Deb has shared, or if anyone has a question um, from their own program that they'd like some feedback from Deb, feel free to answer that now. But um, I really love your 
I really love Deb, your non-scale victories. I think it's so important to write those down and to keep it a, that long list. Cause when you get discouraged and when it feels hard, you can go back and see like how far you've come and, and just all the benefits of keeping going. So yes. Um, uh, let's see, Wendy. Yeah. Did you want to go ahead and unmute yourself? And my question is, do you have like a two week menu that you've printed up that you can share with people of what to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah. Deb um, has a really great Facebook group, right? Deb, it's um, Deb's Delicious Dinners. Is that what it's called? Yeah. It's, it's just, um, it's my, um, it's my dinner ideas and I post on there and do little tutorials, but it's mostly dinners. Um, I don't really have a 14, um, 14 day plan. Um, I have, I have like my go-to, um, meals that, that I, I like, and I tend to you do them a lot like breakfast. I love, uh, my yogurt bowl, you know, so it's, um, it's about, uh, about five ounces of yogurt. Um, cause I'm in maintenance. So I have a little bit more, uh, yogurt and about, uh, an ounce and a half of fiber one cereal and maybe about an ounce of nuts and an ounce of peanut butter and about four or five ounces of fruit. So that's, that's my yogurt bowl. And I have that. So I've eaten that from the beginning and I love that now that I'm making my own yogurt, it's just even more yummy. So <laughs> I'd love that. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do one of the bakes. I, I like uh, pina colada cake by Lori Lundgren. And um, I like the where you take one egg, um, four ounces of rice and an ounce of cheese. You mix all that together and then put it in a frying pan. And I like that. I had that this morning. So those are kind of like I rotate my breakfast like that. Um, I'm not much of a cereal person and I don't eat a lot of yogurt i mean um a lot of um cereal uh, so much or or oatmeal I, I mean i will on occasion uh lunches i i usually have a usually a big salad at lunch uh like taco salad hamburger big mac salad um i love the cauliflower thins i'll make sa a sandwich sandwiches out of that um but usually i tend to have a lot of my salads at lunch and I have like 10, 10 different lunches that I love to have. And I've written them all down. And if I just like, what am I going to eat? I just have them all written on a little recipe card. And I just pull that card out. It's like, just pick one. And, and I also write all of my, um, I write all of my meals. I made, I did this from the beginning is I just made like a spreadsheet of um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, just on, just made a spreadsheet. And then I, I fill out all 21 boxes on a Saturday. I fill out all my, all my meals. And um, yeah, like for dinner, I usually, I usually have fish once or twice a week, maybe a pork tenderloin. Um, I like Mac, I love Mexican food. So that's always in there. Um, uh, Mexican or uh, Italian night too. So yeah, there, I mean, there's just so much. I'm a person that, has to eat something different every day. I don't eat the same meal. And, and I like to keep things stocked in my freezer, like, you know, the ground beef. And then I just assemble everything all at the last minute. So I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, you know, follow this to a key, but um, I do feel, I do feel it all out. Yeah. And, and I love there. that. Lisa's there. And, and then, you know, if I don't, if I decide I don't want to eat that, then, then I don't eat that. But, um, yeah. I love so, that layout. Like I think meal planning and meal preparation is just for sure key to success. Yeah. <laughs> so having, I love that the way that you have that out and yeah. And you are part of the, so you all, you are, you're also part of the starting out bright Facebook group. Too, yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like I love that Facebook group. That group has helped me so much and, and Deb's delicious dinners, like such great places to find support and help and recipes. And 
Um, yeah, I just, yeah, I love that you're such a good cook and are willing to share your recipes and they're so simple too. It's just like, sometimes you need ideas on how to put things together. So, yep. um, one of the questions in here with, from Kim was how do you keep from beating yourself up? Yeah. When, mm-hmm, when going off plan. Um, I know that, that was, I think I started saying, okay, uh, yep. It was a choice. You weren't bad. You know, I stopped saying you were bad for one. Um, I said, you made a choice. It wasn't a good choice. It wasn't the best choice, but it was a choice. And, um, you need to get back on track because you know what will happen. You know, remember your why. Okay, we're in it to win it. So, um, yeah, in in a lot of inner work too, a lot of self love and learning a lot of the uh, a lot of the Bible verses. Um, I just got a T shirt the other day or yesterday, and it was um, it's it's from Love and Faith it's a company and this is like the best t-shirt and it has all of this of who you are, who God says you are. I don't know if that's backwards, but Mm, yeah, I can see it. That is so beautiful. I love that strong, beautiful, chosen. Um, let's see. Amazing, victorious, enough, capable. Oh, that's so good. So important. Yeah. So, so I got that. I definitely, I got that, that t-shirt to wear. I mean, we need, when we make choices like that, we need to have that self-love and we need to remind ourselves of who God says we are. You are, what does God call you? What, what does God say who you are? He doesn't say you were bad or you have a, you know, a fat butt you know, he doesn't say mean things like that, or you'll never do it. That's the devil talking. Mm -hmm. So we have to undo all that by remembering who God calls us to be. So that's kind of, yeah, it's, it's a daily thing. (laughs) Really. I feel like it just takes practice, you know, like to practice that self-compassion and, and, you know, no, no one is perfect, but I love what you talked about just using language that isn't shaming yourself and just right. getting rid of like calling yourself good or bad because of what you eat, just loving yourself um, and being patient with yourself, talking to yourself it, it, like you would a friend. And you can, yeah, right. And you can, you can wear it as a t-shirt, but you, you have to etch it in your heart. Mm-hmm. You have to scratch those words on your heart and believe them and say them every day and, and ask for God, please help me, help me see who you say I am. So that, that I think we can internalize those messages like through, I think journaling is such an important way, like writing it out longhand and also saying it out loud to yourself, you know, um, that's how like we can really etch it in our hearts is by saying it, not just thinking it, but saying it and writing it. And, you know, just over and over again, just keep telling yourself that, but so good. Um, Noreen asked, do you practice any morning or evening routines? Yes. Um, morning, a morning. Um, I like to just spend time alone, um, in my little office, um, with a cup of coffee and God's word. And I'll read either from a devotional every day. Um, and I also do, um, the, the free Bible app and I pick this, like, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can't see that, but, but it's, yeah. So there's all sorts of, I'm working on body image right now. So, there's um that's the one that i'm working on is um compared to who a 10-day plan so i'll do uh i'll do these um and it's just a it's just a free app that you can get it's called uh 
Holy Bible or U version. So I, I like doing that. I like to have a little, it's they're either five days or seven days, and you can invite friends to participate, but I like to do that in the morning and then that just kind of settles me. And then I kind of plan my day of what I need to do, like what's my one thing <laughs> that I have to do today. And I have my I have my week planned out now that I'm I'm doing yoga now on Mondays and um, I do Tuesday, Tuesdays, I do um, volunteer at hospice. I take my dog with me and we go see the patients at the hospice center down the road as a way to give back. Um, I've got my art class that I do. So even though I'm retired, I'm finding, I mean, boy, I'm finding, I'm filling my I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. And then the evening too, um, immediately after dinner, um, I've done this from the get go. In and immediately after dinner, that the the kitchen is closed. Sign goes up in my head, you know, and I I wash my face, put usually put my pajamas on, and then I brush my teeth, and then I get that water pick out, and nothing else is going <laughs> in that mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a that's my routine, and usually I read in bed at night. So I love it. Oh, Deb. Thank you so much for taking the time to share oh, yeah. your, like your strategies and tips and so inspiring to see just the peace and freedom that you have in your life and just the grit and determination that it took to get here. Like I'm, I'm sure it wasn't easy. It took years, yes. but you know, like it's so worth it. Just be patient, keep going. And, and, you know, it, it's so possible. So yeah, Deb, thank you so much for coming and thank you everyone for being here. Just love you all. And um, I just feel so uplifted by talking with you, Deb. <laughs> so, well, can you, God bless you too on your, in your ministry, Erin, and what you're doing. And I'm just so tickled and excited for you. I know giving up your, your nursing job, because I used to be a NICU nurse too when I first started. So we we have so much in common. I know, but we have so now much that you're doing this full time. And I'm just so tickled for you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it is. Um, I feel called to it and <laughs> I accept the call and I just been trying to give my all to, to spread the message that there's hope, you know, you and I both know what it's like to be on the other side and just the pain of, of, um, living with food addiction and, and, you know, the hopelessness and powerlessness that you feel, but I just hope that people can learn that there's a path to freedom and peace. And, um, so thank you for being here and, and I'm so grateful for <laughs> your example in our community and your, your encouragement. So anyway, I love you guys and, yeah, um, we you. will talk to you later. <laughs> bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Wendy. Bye, Mickey. Bye, Kim. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks. It was you great. Thanks. Bye. Thanks bye. so much. It was great. Great.